Hello and welcome to Inside Edition, where we discuss national, regional and international issues in depth. Since its establishment in 2001 by the Islamic Development Bank and a number of leading Islamic financial institutions, the General Council for Islamic Banks and Financial Institutions, dubbed Sibafi, has been a leading international non-profit organization in the global architecture of Islamic finance. With over 130 members from more than 34 jurisdictions all around the world, Sibafi aims at deepening Sharia objectives in financial dealings and transactions as well as facilitating cooperation between members and institutions of common interest. To talk more about that, we are pleased to be joined here in the studio by the Sibafi Secretary General, Dr. Abdul Ilah Abdul Atiq, right after this. The financial sector has undergone significant change as a result of various developments with direct and indirect consequences. Some of these changes present opportunities for further growth while others pose challenges and risks to the financial sector's stability. Considering the forces driving the change in the financial industry is a critical factor in ensuring the growth of the Islamic financial services industry. We took a proactive approach at the General Council for Islamic Banks and Financial Institutions to assess the industry's developments and identify ways of promoting the best practices, guiding the industry to overcome challenges, and continuing its growth. Over the last six years, Sabafi has successfully implemented two strategic plans to support the industry's growth in light of global developments. To remain relevant, Sibafi reassessed its strategic plans to identify the appropriate initiatives based on current developments such as regulatory reforms, emerging trends such as sustainability and climate change, the acceleration of digitalization, and others. An inclusive process was used to create the new strategic plan for the period 2022 to 2025. With support from the board of directors, Sibafi members and stakeholders were engaged through meetings and surveys to capture their feedback and suggestions. Sibafi developed its new strategy that focuses on achieving four strategic goals. Strengthening the global market position of Islamic finance through promoting its principles and its added value for the economy and the society. Developing meaningful and impactful collaborations between IFIs and other international institutions to support the growth of IFSI. Leveraging on growth drivers such as sustainability and technology to boost the IFSI development. Equipping all stakeholders with the knowledge, skills, and competencies to actively participate in the development of the IFSI. A number of initiatives will be developed to achieve these strategic goals. These initiatives are guided by four strategic objectives. Advocacy of Islamic finance values and related policies and regulations. Sustainability and innovation integration industry research and analysis, professional development. Sibafi will rely on 3A concept to facilitate the successful implementation, evaluation, and communication of deliverables of the new strategic plan, aiming, defining clear targets and smart objectives, assessing, conducting a continuous assessment of the initiatives and projects, applying, implementing the defined initiatives and communicating the results to show commitment. Sibafi is pleased to announce the official launch of its new strategic plan 2022 to 2025 and we look forward to your generous support as we continue to serve the industry and sustain its growth. Welcome back. Joining me here in the studio is Sibafi Secretary General Dr. Abdel Ilah Bil Atiq. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for getting me here. Uh, sir, first of Sibafi is an establishment that has uh, been in Bahrain for um, around 21 years. Your anniversary was actually recent. So what can you tell us about uh, Sibafi's, uh, basically the establishment of Sibafi as well as its vision, its mission, and uh, what it did until now? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, again, thank you for, for the, the opportunity and for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, first of all, yes, Sibafi, uh, which is the General Council for Islamic Banks and Financial Institutions, it has been established in the year 2001 
Uh, it's an international organization. Uh, we are affiliated to the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Right. Uh, the organization was established by the Islamic Development Bank and leading Islamic bank uh, at the leading Islamic banks at the time, yeah. with the purpose of, uh, uh, in some way, representing the global umbrella for Islamic financial institutions. Right. With then the mandate derived from that is to represent the, the banks, the Islamic banks and other financial Islamic financial institutions right. globally with the um, international organizations, standard setting bodies yeah. and uh, global organizations which have similar mission and objectives uh, as Sibafi. In, in that angle, uh, we have, uh, I mean, our work or mandate derives through uh, some uh, strategic objectives mm -hmm. looking at uh, 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 the advocacy and the representation of Islamic finance mm -hmm. and uh, globally and do to do that uh, we do some uh, uh, like research publications okay. uh, and other trainings workshops yeah. and other programs uh, w we started uh, 21 years as you said uh, ago in in Bahrain and thanks I would like to take this opportunity to mm -hmm. thanks to the leadership of, yeah. of Bahrain the central bank and the higher leadership for uh, this opportunity for the establishment of Sibafi in in Bahrain uh, we have now over uh, 130 Islamic financial institutions right. from 34 uh, countries uh, globally. Exactly. Uh, we will have the opportunity. We have a lot of uh, yeah. uh, things that that we do yeah. uh, that are within our mandate. But if we can say, I mean, in in uh, recent years, we have a uh, uh, very high focus on uh, global development, looking at uh, sustainability, sustainable development, digital transformations, uh, climate change, and many many other other points that yeah. we uh, uh, target and uh, we aim at first of all uh, getting this knowledge spread to the members mm -hmm. first and then representing the members globally with other international bodies and the regulatory bodies in Bahrain and beyond. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> on your uh, what you just said, the OIC, as you have mentioned, is a, a big uh, part of uh, Sibafi's, uh, Sibafi's uh, basically um, uh, uh, establishment and its structure as well and having um, that authority actually puts the standard higher and 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 showcases the standard of Sibafi now uh, what can you tell us about the core values and the strategic goals um, and services that were actually provided by Sibafi yeah I mean the we as, as we said we are affiliated to the organization of Islamic cooperation uh, so we have, uh, but our membership goes actually beyond the, course, the numbers, yeah. the members of, of the OIC. So our work is derived from uh, looking at the global developments today or from before that will have an impact or have a, are having an impact on Islamic banks now or will be having this in the future. Mm -hmm. So our, our uh, uh, core objectives or goals is uh, really to have, uh, I mean, which have actually uh, through uh, various dis discussions and, and, uh, um, and consultations with the members and with the board of directors, we just had uh, a renewed uh, strategic yes. plan for 2022, 2025, which for focus on various areas. The, fir the first of it is to uh, uh, promote the value proposition of Islamic finance mm -hmm. by uh, having an integration of sustainability with innovation within the operations of uh, Islamic banks. Okay. And to do this, some various uh, objectives are derived from there is on uh, um, women and young empowerments okay. and uh, the professional development of, of the the staff of uh, Islamic yes. banks. So to do that, we have a number of uh, like workshops, training programs, and so on, which yeah. are stay current mm -hmm. and go beyond the traditional markets, as we as we know. Uh, for instance, uh, I mean the, the GCC or MENA or other countries. Mm -hmm. So I in this, in this, we, we 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 target and we know as Islamic finance has been spreading globally. Uh, in many many parts yeah. of the world and, th and thanks to God for this of course it's very it's a, it's a blessing for yes. to have this mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
we, we, then we, our reach also increases. Mm -hmm. It gives us also more responsibility and of accountability. Yes. We have to go beyond our traditional markets. And for that, we have started many initiatives, including, for example, on the, uh, the, the training and empowerment or so professional development, yeah. uh, reaching to uh, not only to the region uh, or the Arabic speaking countries, but going beyond. And this we started five years ago mm -hmm. or even more to uh, English-speaking countries, yes. French-speaking yes. uh, regions. And we are now starting again to go beyond that to uh, uh, Russian-speaking yes. uh, regions and beyond to Turkish, also Turkish-speaking yeah. uh, places. So this is becoming a, a, a key mandate of, of our organization is to uh, uh, trigger the discussion over what's happening globally and what will have the impact in the future for the, the Islamic banks and bring it to the table, to the agenda. Uh, uh, you know, for example, even on these uh, various, uh, various topics that we talk about on the global agenda, many of the Islamic banks in some countries, they are more advanced perhaps than others. And one thing which we have in, uh, uh, I mean, in the, the Islamic banks in general, Islamic financial institutions in general, is that in many countries they have a uh, smaller scale. Yes. So uh, really big banks, there are a uh, limited number of, of them. Course. So that's why it's very important for us to bring all these uh, different uh, uh, profiles of banks, of Islamic banks together to share best practices. Yeah. So we, those that we know that they have some very good practices be, uh, in, their, in their operations, so that we, we put in environment or the atmosphere that is conducive mm. for exchanging information and best practices. And uh, yes, it, it is happening. Okay. So uh, uh, one of the points that we uh, I mean recently or we do is really looking at uh, sustainability, sustainable mm. development to make it as part of the, the operations of the, the Islamic banks. Uh, Islamic banks, uh, I mean, when we look at the, their core mandates mm -hmm. or their DNA, if we can say, it's, it's something similar or perhaps even go beyond the requirement of sustainable development. Yes. So we took this opportunity, of course, to uh, uh, through some of the research that we did and uh, to find that uh, there is a clear convergence and synergies between sustainable development requirements and Islam. the objectives of, of Sharia that, Sharia that are really that drive uh, the work of, of Islamic banks. Yeah. And so we found uh, there is a strong correlation between the two. Mm -hmm. So that's why we started, we have, I mean, to, to go uh, with what's happening globally. We have established uh, two working groups that help us uh, from uh, the membership, that help us to have this exchange of dialogue, mm -hmm. have one on sustainable, uh, a sustainability working group, and the second is on innovation and technologies yeah. uh, that uh, debates on what's going on and how it will impact the banks or yeah. is impacting already now and what we can do about it. Yeah. Um, actually, once now that you've mentioned it, when um, I was going through uh, the uh, report last year's uh, report, um, uh, not the sustainable guide one, but um, uh, the report from last year, one of the conclusions actually said that there um, are certain changes that have to be made uh, to be accommodating the new norms um, of uh, the banking environment of the cities. And part of that is the technological adaptation um, as well. Um, also, uh, when you talked about uh, human uh, manpower and training uh, more human manpower, it's very um, uh, important to mention that Zibafi has been providing these trainings and these workshops uh, for many, many years. Um, but now there are more workshops because of the progress of uh, Islamic banking, uh, not just in Bahrain, but in the region. And as you've rightfully said, I mean, um, uh, Islamic banking has always been there, but the strength of it have always been in the region here because basically the banking systems were built upon, uh, a lot of the banking systems were built upon um, Sharia banking. Um, in other countries, uh, like you've mentioned, uh, they were were more of a service from banks uh, rather than an actual bank that, that does the full um, Islamic banking. How important is it to exchange these expertise and spread the awareness about uh, the diligence of uh, Islamic banking specifically? Yeah, I think, I think this is very important and this is critical. And thank mm. you for this question. Because uh, 
Traditionally, I mean, uh, if we look at it historically, Islamic banking started in the region, mm -hmm. mostly in the 73, 75, okay. through various uh, uh, initiatives, mm -hmm. um, I mean, in Bahrain, in, uh, in the UAE, in uh, Kuwait yeah. and others. And then from there, gradually it's spread out to yes. global. When even, I mean, on the, the year tw 2001, when uh, Sigmafi was established here, the, uh, the, the spread was very limited mm -hmm. still. Yeah. So I think th th it was a really an, uh, uh, an opportunity and a chance for a country like Bahrain to, yeah. to host us in this at that early stage, yeah. while at that time Islamic banking was perhaps not so developed as it is right no. now. So uh, going beyond that, I mean, for the last uh, and, and uh, I think uh, there was a really kind of a jump in the uh, crisis, uh, the global crisis, financial crisis, 2007, 2009. Several jumps. Yes. Yeah. So when that happened, mm. uh, so there was like uh, a global awareness of Islamic finance, yeah. that it is uh, something that is more solid, more uh, reliable on uh, ethical transactions, yeah. on the real economy. Mm -hmm. So that's really put, came up with, with a push. And then from there, we started having a spread uh, globally of uh, Islamic banks. Now, uh, we are more than 100 countries actually have s Islamic finance, uh, either banks or some other, other institutions. Okay. So uh, when we look at the geographical distribution, of course, there is the core here in, in the GCC. Mm. There is other regions, for example, Southeast Asia. Yes. We have uh, uh, Malaysia. Malaysia. There is in Turkey. Uh, they have some strong interest of it. But uh, uh, some other places, they are still limited. Maybe the numbers are there of the institutions, but perhaps the scale and the size and sophistication. Even awareness. Is, is an awareness, of course. It is, it is less. So that's why, I mean, we, we start working with our members mm. to get this uh, the word out and yeah. to see how we can exchange uh, cooperation. So to the last maybe five, ten years, there were a lot, lot of uh, exchanges of information, a lot of delegations come in, for example, here to Bahrain mm -hmm. to see the institutions, the infrastructure institutions that are here, like Sibafi, IOFI, the IFM that work on this, and uh, visit the central bank of, of Bahrain, see the level of uh, regulation and sophistication of supervision for the Islamic finance. Right. So there was uh, a tremendous number, really. I mean, I cannot mention uh, uh, how many but for example many in from Africa from Central Asia yeah. uh, all the, the, the countries in Central Asia like uh, Kazakhstan yes. uh, Uzbekistan yes. um, uh, Tajikistan and yeah, many yeah. many many others uh, from, from Africa, North Africa also yes. started uh, strongly from Morocco, uh, yeah. Tunisia of course had it before and other Sub-Saharan Africa which yeah. is has also, also a lot of, lot of potential and going beyond this to non-traditional markets, of course, like the European countries, yes. whenever there is an opportunity. So that's why we think that there is a, a way of uh, a leverage mm -hmm. uh, for the benefits of both. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we think that, the, uh, of course, in the region, the growth of the industry has been tremendous over the years with double digits growths, mm -hmm. even during the crisis still the growth is there. Yes. But there are pockets of growth that are stronger perhaps and for the future will be very beneficial. This is probably in uh, countries like uh, African countries, which have uh, young population uh, growth, economic growth potential very high. Yeah. You have Central Asia, also very, very good. Right. And uh, uh, there is uh, the other side also of Southeast Asia, like Indonesia, yes. uh, the biggest Muslim yes. countries, but with Islamic finance still not very well developed. Yeah. So these are like pockets of, of development that uh, probably uh, will bring growth to those regions, but also benefits to the current Islamic banking, how it is in okay. this region. Amazing. Um, actually, uh, because of that, because of these uh, pockets, as uh, you said, um, uh, these uh, strengthen the position of Sibafi and in the future, of course, Islamic banking in general. Um, and usually the people that spread the awareness or spread the word um, are the clients of the Islamic banks, but they are being told or being um, given this information by the staff. And the staff is uh, where you guys put a lot of care uh, into giving the proper accredited uh, training um, in order for them to be able to 
spread the awareness in that uh, from that point of view but also um, you guys do a lot um, of efforts to achieve the SDGs uh, not only from an educational point of view because that is one of the major SDGs but also in um, uh, basically um, balancing the scales when it comes to uh, gender employment and stuff like that what can you tell us about how you attain to achieve all of these SDG points well, thank you very much for this question. This is uh, when we talk about sustainable development and sustainable development goals, sustainability in general, it's a subject which is very close to my heart personally. So we have been uh, really working on this very hard for even uh, I mean for s six, seven years uh, yeah. already. Yeah. But our work has been gradual. When we started, I mean at the beginning, so we start from this angle, looking at uh, the, the DNA of Islamic banks and the ethical way of, of, of banking, uh, which we feel as an organization that perhaps is not enough shown yeah. to, d to the public, to the outsiders. I mean, we know it inside what we do. We know the ethics and so on elements of it, but perhaps the outsiders don't have this, this knowledge. Yeah. So we started doing, uh, with going with the global developments, for instance, on sustainability, doing a number of research. And then we found out that uh, in reality, so there is this close, as we said, close relationship and correlation, mm -hmm. strong ties between the two. But on the other hand, perhaps there is uh, a lack of awareness from the outside and from the inside of Islamic banks. There is perhaps sometimes there was a, a sort of m misunderstanding or not showcasing what we are yeah. doing. Yeah. So to, to, to address this, this is why in, in uh, I mean two, three years ago, we started with the establishment of this sustainability working group, yes. which have members from over 20 countries and uh, representing uh, even in international organizations working with the United Nations on it and with other places from all over the globe actually working in this. And the purpose was to have uh, started brainstorming at the beginning and we said, what, what can be done? I mean, how can we showcase this value proposition of Islamic finance, yes. which goes beyond even the sustainable development goals, yeah. but it will promote the sustainable development goals in the yes. same time. So we had uh, uh, some uh, event with the United Nations mm -hmm. United Development uh, Program uh, we had here in, ba in Bahrain just before uh, before the pandemic actually started. So we had plans to continue this. Uh, but then that happened. It did not happen, but we continue our, yeah. our work. And this is where we, uh, we came up, we, we started working on, on a sustainability guide sustainability guide for Islamic banks Perfect. Islamic financial institutions so to to show and this actually was just uh, released uh, one week last week it's just on the website of the yes. I saw it yeah yeah Perfect. J just very recent so in here we we want to show to the the, the Islamic banks how perhaps they can go in a systematic way to promote the SDGs within their operations, sustainability within their operations. Because the services are already there. They've been there from the beginning. But exactly. Nobody really talked about them and put them together that e way. Exactly. Okay. Mm. So just really puts the framework for yes. it. And so we started Amazing. with having some discussions on the framework and the foundations of sustainability within uh, Islamic finance in yeah. general, if we can sue. And you say, okay, you have to do certain certain matters, but of course you have to disclose what you do. Yeah. You have to be transparent of your operations, what you are doing to showcase this value so because we we think really that uh, uh, beyond uh, the, the Sharia compliance mm -hmm. element of the Islamic banks Islamic banking should be uh, appealing to universally yes to anyone can yes. be a client it's of Islamic a safe bank. bet Yes, uh, because of its ethics, mm -hmm. because of the uh, close relationship with the economy. And this is what we want then to promote. So we have a number of initiatives Wonderful. going uh, uh, with this uh, uh, for the coming uh, weeks and months. So this just was, was established. We have already announced that uh, uh, we have an, an, an award, for instance, that we do. Uh, so the subjects for the 2023 mm -hmm. uh, award will be sustainability. Beautiful. So the, the banks that will have <laughs> get <More> ready. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> get ready for it. And then yeah. you have now the opportunity <laughs> because then you have you know what is the road map. Yeah. So we are establishing also a community of champions mm -hmm. that will champion this and showcase what they are doing mm -hmm. for each each element. Of course, uh, sustainable development goals uh, cannot be or do not have the uh, same level of, uh, if we can say, attention 
every in every part of the world. Yeah. Some parts more perhaps de delay in certain areas, so they have to have more focus on those. And, and this, through our research, we found out that actually this is the case. For example, in some countries, uh, education is lagging behind, so okay. more efforts need to be done in there. Some other places, women empowerment or the week. youth empowerment is perhaps lagging behind and need to, to go and to have some more effort in that. So what we are recommending is, of course, sustainability cannot be just implemented like this, uh, bluntly but so there will need to be uh, uh, like uh, an analysis looking at the country strategies mm -hmm. on sustainability okay. what is the country focus what is the bank focus how to have this into the mission and vision of the Islamic banks and then from there starts with the top with the board of directors right. have the buy-in and then have go down to the levels of the operations yes. and, and to do it. Uh, so it's highlighted to us also, as we said, some, some things that we need to, to work more uh, on is, for, for instance, on women empowerment. Mm -hmm. So this is not uh, only uh, a question for the Islamic banks or, I mean, all the region. It's a global uh, attention that we need to do and driven by the UN and by many others, even on the financial sector, yeah. uh, there is an interest on looking of how to have gender equity on yes. terms of giving opportunities, uh, both in the workforce as well as on the financial inclusion front. Yeah. So to do this again, we start. We are starting. Actually, we'll be just issuing a, a publication, a research that we are doing on this on women empowerment, and this will be inshallah ready by in the next uh, two, three, four weeks before the end of June. We will be having uh, some awareness uh, uh, initiatives on it to see to understand uh, what perhaps again some of the banks, as we said, are advanced in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So really, our our aim is to set uh, a benchmark. Mm -hmm. So look at this is the benchmark and then the banks by themselves they have to to go through and see where they are where they are situated and then what others are doing yeah. and how they can improve their stance from the sustainable development goals in in general and sustainability uh, in the islamic banking in particular um uh, the amazing part about this is, as, as we've mentioned, that um, actually the services, um, uh, the sustainability of services have always been uh, available within Sharia um, uh, banking. Um, but what makes it important to follow it now are the many challenges that have been faced all around the world. We're talking about the pandemic, we're talking about economic challenges that a lot of countries um, are facing, lack of resources, um, natural resources in some countries. So all of these are uh, actually why um, there is this big movement towards it, but it's always been there. In uh, 2001, one of the things that your report also mentioned was the changing of um, how uh, banking uh, or monetary banking is looked at and moving it to value assets and so on. And that is part of uh, the uh, Sharia banking uh, concept that uh, Sibafi actually supports. They show you the way to do What can you tell us about um, these recommendations and their application? How will they change um, the way Islamic banking is viewed in the future and maybe have more um, goals for a future clientele for you, which would be the Islamic banks themselves? Yeah, well, um, I think this is very, very important because, again, uh, if we are looking at... Uh, if you can say universal banking, and this is how actually we really look at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Islamic banking, if you if you talk to any any anybody, and they have m many friends from Europe or from the US, mm -hmm. and I, 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 when they are curious sometimes about Islamic finance, I, I explain to them what are the values, what are the underlying requirements, what yeah. is the value proposition of this. So regardless of you, Islamic or not, I mean, you call it that way or no. It's so it, 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 it is appealing to them. So many of them, they say, yes, w why not? This is should be should be very, very important. Uh, on the other hand, and this we see it's not only on the Islamic banking. For example, you have uh, also the, the, the Sukuk. Yes. Uh, and so we have this uh, movement and the recent uh, uh, developments. They bring the question, I mean, in many fronts, I mean, on climate change, climate change risks and the implications for the financial sector and the transition that is needed for that. And you have, mm -hmm. I mean, the values, looking at the values. When we look at, for example, the financial sector, uh, the, 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 the global, global GDP represents 
maybe around 10 or uh, 8 or 10 percent of uh, the global financial assets. Okay. But is this really? <laughs> uh, is this what we can do? Is can we do more? <laughs> exactly. So uh, it shouldn't be the other way. It should yeah. be. I mean, the financial sector should be at the service of yeah. the real economy, yeah. not not the the other way. True. So and that's why we think that bringing values again at the center of the of the financial sector mm -hmm. is very good and very important. So uh, the way to go with it is to show this value proposition mm -hmm. and to show. I mean, again. Sustainability is one way of doing it. Yeah. So there are other ways, as you said, like uh, uh, this uh, sustainability sukuk or green sukuk mm -hmm. or others uh, on the on the asset management or, or the funds, the Islamic funds. It's also a very good and important way of uh, promoting uh, sustainability. And we know that there. Are, I mean, this this sector, for example, of the Islamic funds has has seen uh, tremendous growth for the last uh, five years. Mm -hmm. It has probably uh, had uh, tripled or 300% yes. for the last five years, reaching 200 billion uh, dollars, 200 billion US dollars uh, recently. So there is, uh, and even I'm sure, we are sure it's beyond that, goes beyond that, yeah. because these are those funds that are decla declared uh, per se to be or public yeah, uh, that are declared like that. But we have many, many others. So I think we there is a value proposition, but again now it's really from, I mean, uh, our role as an, uh, the organization representing uh, the Islamic banks is to showcase this and on the other hand to get our members yeah. to get into this movement and focus more on these areas, on the value propositions and how to show it and to go beyond the traditional markets, not mm -hmm. just stay inside where we are working, but to go really yes. beyond to, uh, I mean, developed countries and those that will be that emerging markets also, which represent really, uh, again, uh, tremendous uh, growth, growth potential for the future. Right, especially that um, this is basically the sustainable way of building the uh, monetary infrastructure of countries like that. Well, in order for uh, Sibafi to uh, do all of these duties and uh, do these research and be able to um, uh, tackle all of the things that their members expect them to, um, Sibafi deals and cooperates with many regional and global institutions. What can you tell us about these kind of collaborations and how do they contribute positively to the aspired goals that you have uh, set for yourself? Yeah, I mean, our, our collaborations on different fronts, for example, on the advocacy, mm -hmm. uh, the advocacy front, uh, it is very important that, uh, uh, and, and actually they are very happy with it, so we have relationship, working relationship, for example, with international organizations like the World Bank, yeah. the uh, International Monetary Fund, uh, with the Financial Stability Board, with the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, and others. This is from the conventional conventional side. And do you even the UN, actually, the United Nations, yes. as I said, we had some programs with them, and we are currently uh, doing, exploring, resuming the work that we had in presence on some of the awareness initiatives right. that will go beyond traditional markets again. We will really, on a global a global scale, to Africa, Kenya, yes. or other other really places uh, in in Southeast Asia, Central Asia, North Africa, and right. and beyond. Uh, with with these all international uh, bodies, uh, our role with them is to explain exactly what is Islamic finance and how we can contribute globally to this, to, to sustainable development and to financial stability. This is very, very important. Uh, with others from the Islamic finance sphere, like mm -hmm. the IOFI, Accounting Audit Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions, and uh, the IFSP, Islamic Financial Services Board in Malaysia, mm -hmm. we have, of course, very close relationship, working relationship to, to address common issues that we see from from for the the membership so uh, b going beyond this on the uh, areas related to uh, professional development we have ourselves we have established we have uh, uh, agents in more than 20 countries mm -hmm. that deliver our programs uh, the good thing also that we can say is with the pandemic what it's brought from positive side we try also yeah. not only to see the negative sides but we tried I mean when it just happened at the beginning we were like disturbed or yeah. having you know the meetings in presence and so on have way. to change everything so for maybe a few months there was like a 
kind of uncertainty. But beyond that, after three, four months, we started doing our programs uh, online, mm -hmm. uh, changing them online, which allowed us actually to get outreach to places that we were not able to go to. And to it's sustainable. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this was really very, I mean, good opportunity, which gave us the idea. So we are working now, I mean, on this to really have a global reach for the professional development programs that we have on having a platform, dedicated platform, where we will be delivering all our, I mean, online platform, we'll be delivering all the, the training materials in uh, Arabic, French, English, and Russian and Turkish. Right. So really to be a uh, true, true global, in addition to our existing uh, like agents why we, what that we have and, and workshops and webinars and so on. So I think we, we took uh, a positive approach in, in terms of looking at for what's, what's the disturbance that uh, the pandemic brought in leveraging from it and perhaps transform it into some opportunities. And we are lucky we have our members that support us and uh, our uh, board of directors yeah. uh, that support us for this journey. Amazing. Um, when Sibafi uh, does uh, these kind of efforts or, or these kind of cooperation or, or executes these kind of um, services um, regionally and nationally, in Bahrain specifically and also in the region around us, what are the main collaborators um, uh, that are main collaborators like the CBB you've mentioned before that are important for your work? Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, CBB is a key, key pillar and key support for, for Sibafi. But all the other Islamic banks that are here, or Islamic financial institutions, mm -hmm. uh, they are, of course, they are, they are our members and they are support, they support us. We do work also with, uh, we have a working relationship with the EDB, Economic yeah. Development Board, yes. of course, and many others, actually, all the, the institutions that are here in Bahrain, even universities. For example, yes. this is part of our duty also, okay. where we where we think we offer, for example, all internship opportunities and uh, uh, collaborations in some of the research. So yes. we think it's a duty for us to, uh, I mean, the local, we have, have some activity on the, the local basis. And we do have, of course, many programs that we do them in presence. We used to have, for example, some that will be coming uh, with uh, international prestigious universities uh, like Ivy Business School from Canada. Mm -hmm. So we have an annual program. Last two years it was, uh, um, online, but before that was always happening in Bahrain, and inshallah this year again will be happening in, in Bahrain. So I mean we have our, and there are also, as we said, some other uh, organizations that work in Bahrain that are international organizations. Yeah. For example, even the uh, MENA FATF, yes. Financial Action Task Force based mm -hmm. in here, where we have some uh, work in collaborations, and the other Islamic financial uh, infrastructure institutions that are uh, based in here. Amazing. Now, when we talk about um, the uh, COVID-19 and how it affected us, one of the things that you've mentioned that is uh, some, a must or a positive side that this Buffy has actually gone through is technological innovation. I think technological innovation was speeded up because of the pandemic. So um, how did COVID-19 bring changes and challenges for the Islamic financial institutions? And how did you use it to uh, your own uh, goals and, and to make it more positive? Yeah, I think um, starting maybe f I think 2017 mm -hmm. or 16, 17, because we, we do have our Global Islamic Bankers Survey uh, where we, on an annual basis that we do, where we survey the banks on uh, new emerging issues that we say to give them a benchmark on where they are situated. Right. What we have seen at the beginning, I mean, uh, when we started with this on the financial technologies or the fintech, for instance, okay. is that perhaps there was uh, like um, not uh, not a keen interest on these on these points at the beginning when we used to talk about the digital currencies, the, the blockchain, and so on. Yeah. It was a mere like something we hear Just about, but we <laughs> don't really consider yeah. seriously. But uh, yeah, so the and and the, the more we go the more the awareness and we bring them this discussion on the table at our events and our board of directors meetings yeah. and our AGM and so on. <laughs> so the more we go, the more we started to see awareness arising mm -hmm. uh, within the Islamic financial institutions on the need for digitalization and digital transformation. Yes. So when the pandemic happened, uh, what we saw, I think some positive signs is that 
projects that were planned for maybe three or five years beyond the road, they were brought uh, very early mm. to, uh, to, 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 the, to, the, to, to, to be implemented. And they were indeed implemented. Uh, on the other hand, uh, what, we, what we have seen, and perhaps this is where we need a little bit more of work, is that, and we thought that it is very important to, to establish an innovation and technology working group. Because our research, while it shows now that there is interest or uh, the banks, they have they started implementing more of these technologies, new technologies, we find that perhaps there is a lack of more advanced technologies. Okay. And this is why we try, again, I mean, for example, taking this opportunity you now to talk about it, yeah. to say, like, digital transformation is not only mobile payments. Yes. So there are much more, it's not only uh, mobile banking. Yeah, it goes deeper than that. It's I mean, uh, let alone the fact of, of cryptocurrencies and stuff like that, there is a whole exactly. sea of things you can go into. Exactly. Yeah. So what we found out is that uh, many, they started with this, like mobile payments, mobile yeah. banking, and so on. But then seeing maybe this is it. No, we say yeah. no. No, hold on. So there are a lot of other things. You have you have the opportunities and possible things that can be brought by, for example, the blockchain. You have the automation processes. Yeah. You have the big data. You have the artificial intelligence, how it is used, for example, in the operations, to for detecting fraud, for anti-money laundering, yeah. for client-facing uh, tools. So it's, it is much, much more. And this, I think we still need to do a little bit more. Yes. So some of the banks, of course, they are doing or they are starting to do this, and others, uh, we are we are promoting this a little bit further. Yeah. And this is the purpose was for the establishment of the innovation and technology working group, where we, uh, each, I think we had our second or third meeting just recently, and then we uh, bring the banks and we ask them. Uh, what is the key technology you are implementing and then we ask them to showcase to the others again yes. to see and to have this exchange of views and we will be having some some work on the, for example the, 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 the blockchain uh, use cases okay. in, in the financial sector uh, we are working on some areas for example and which is very very important I mean it will be for in the next probably three to five years mm -hmm. will have an impact is on central bank digital currencies yes which is something new now i mean it's still not implemented but it's many countries uh, over 80 percent of central banks they are either doing some pilot projects or doing uh, very advanced research on this and this will have really some significant impact or may have significant impact on the on the financial intermediation in general yeah. so uh, the banks we have to talk about it to engage with regulators to see how this will have uh, or may have an impact from now and then prevent uh, negative impacts yes. from happening yeah. because of course the role of of the financial sector is very important for the real economy so it has to continue having this intermediation mm -hmm. between the i mean depositors and of course the the projects yeah. Of course, uh, one of the roles that you do um, at Sibafi is uh, sort of putting out the risks of going into uh, these uh, different um, uh, fields or different uh, technological fields. Well, to continue on that, the Sibafi seeks to promote exceptional practices uh, and innovation specifically in the industry through supporting Islamic uh, finance market related research, as you have mentioned before. How do um, you target the research that you will do? Is it a survey, as you've mentioned, from the other banks? Is it something that you futuristically see because of your research, you put your recommendations that are, as you said, from 2022 until 2025? How do you um, go into uh, uh, supporting the Islamic financial market through these researchers? Actually, our, our work with international bodies is very important. Yes. Because, for example, when we when we we have regular meetings with uh, the leaders of the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision mm -hmm. and others, for we have interactions with the Financial Stability Board and others. We work with the regulators. Yeah. So the what's emerging or will be happening in the next three to five years, we already have some kind of views on it. We mm -hmm. see what, how, what will be happening. Or it's For trending. Yeah, exactly, what are the trends? For example, in the year 2016, we had our first 
discussions, roundtables on the future of money. Yeah. And we invited the, f the founder of the blockchain okay. to, to discuss. Amazing. So this was really very early. So the everyone were, asked, were thinking why we are looking at, at, at this now. Yeah. Uh, last year, for example, we had some discussions on the global taxes. Yes. And now we see after we see that <laughs> the changes of the taxes <laughs> the and everything changes changing, are, are, yeah. are coming. So we have some very close interaction with uh, with uh, the regulators and with international organizations, and then we see what are the the emerging uh, trends that will have an impact or already having mm -hmm. or will have in the next three to five years. For example, I can share with you. For and this is not really new, but for for example, as I said, you have central bank digital currencies. Yes. This is we, we know will have, if not addressed properly, uh, may have some significant impact. Yeah. So we are really doing some research on it right now to see how this will be, uh, how we can prevent this and how we can talk to banks and the regulators and so on. We have, for example, issues of climate change, yeah. climate change risk. Most likely, uh, for example, even the, the we see it from the Financial Stability Board, uh, we see from there is the, the network of central banks, central bank network of for greening the financial sector. Uh, for example, what we saw, it was established uh, early last year or just the end of the year before uh, with the 30, 35 banks, central banks. Now it has reached over 100 uh, central banks looking at this. Yeah. So when you see this, you, you, you foresee there is a change that will happen on this yeah, front. So definitely. we can say that the Basel Committee, for instance, for sure in the next two to three years will be issuing some, some things related to uh, prudential uh, guidelines for the climate change risks for the banks. Yes. So that's why we start from now. We say, okay, so there is something here. So we are anticipating this yeah. and we have, uh, for example, in the sustainability working group, one of our projects is looking at the carbon footprint yeah. of the Islamic banks portfolios, not only the operations, but really on the assets or so what they are doing. So it's, it's a way to um, have again, see what is our situation, how this will evolve and how this will have an impact on our operations. Yeah. So it's, uh, if we, I mean, in, in, in short, uh, the way we do or we approach our research or our advocacy uh, interests is through the surveys that we do, where we, it's just on an annual basis, where we see what are the concerns of the Islamic banks, mm -hmm. and then we start doing developing programs on them, and with our discussions with global bodies, and of course, uh, very key is our board of directors, which yeah. have, I mean, from 15 countries, uh, where we meet, of course, three, four times a year, and then we discuss all the potential, uh, I mean, the important factors that we have to address and we have to include in our uh, work plan. Okay. Um, one <coughs> really important thing when we talk about um, this kind of innovation and the research that put, uh, is put behind it is the acknowledgement um, of uh, your member institutions, which are the Islamic banks, as well as your uh, own staff or the basically the people that make it possible um, uh, for these kind of services to be studied over and over again. And that's why Sibafi actually established a number of awards. You, you talked a little bit about it, but I want to go more in depth for people to understand that this is really a very harmonious a uh, kind of uh, balanced system where uh, there is research, uh, there is actual uh, pushing for more sustainability, for more knowledge, for more execution of these services because of uh, safeguarding not just the individual's uh, um, monetary or economy, but actual countries. The global economy uh, has seen a lot of shocks. We've mentioned that also before, not just from the pandemic. Um, there were the stock uh, falls, there were a lot of things that came with the environmental uh, um, aspects as well. Um, so what can you tell us about Sibafi establishing awards um, that are targeting various several goals as well as different themes? How important are these awards? Why are they made? And have you seen that their impact has changed uh, the way people do business or the people approach Islamic banking businesses? Yeah. I think I think there is, and as you say, there is like uh, our approach has different angles. Yeah. So we have, I mean, as we said, things that we do with uh, regulators, with international bodies. That's on the one hand. Mm -hmm. We have the awareness on, the, uh, for example, on the risks on on some areas and the operational issues that can happen. But we also wanted to have uh, rewards. 
So encouraging best practices from our side is looking at uh, the, 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 I mean the, the various topics that we want. And when you actually look at the topics that mm -hmm. we have there, then you can uh, see what is our thinking yeah. on how is it going, how is it evolving. And, and that's why we established in the 2017, we had our the first award, which was on um, um, environment and social responsibility. Yes. So uh, you can see from Since there, so already, yeah. so it's like the precursors, something coming before the sustainability yes. to be really embedded. And then uh, we do, do, and we have actually very strong, uh, not fight, but like uh, <laughs> desire <discussions>. of <laughs> the banks to, yes. to have it. So we have yeah. clear criteria having how the how this should be given and how what they should be having to to to, to get it. Uh, and then um, the uh, the other the other uh, award that was following that was on uh, investments and SMEs. Yes, SMEs small operations. It's small and medium. Uh, Enterprises, mm -hmm. so which was again, it was uh, get uh, it's a bank in Bangladesh that, that got it, which they do tremendous work on okay. SMEs, uh, and uh, the the other one, the following one, was on adoption on of uh, financial technologies, okay. technologies, which is so innovations, exactly mm -hmm. the innovations going, which was uh, uh, just last year. So we have it every two years. So our next is on sustainability. Mm -hmm. So uh, and this and this one showing showing the interest on the top from our the members and right. the board uh, uh, all of them I mean last year when we were uh, having this on innovation on, uh, on technology uh, adoption on fintech and technology adoption all of them they were asking they were saying but uh, maybe you should give us more time to prepare for for the next one okay. usually we used to announce it just maybe six months before seven months yeah. so and that's why we had a, a special committee last year already that discussed and met we met and had a number of meetings and decided on the topics to be sustainability for next year yeah. so you see how i mean the thinking of the organization yeah. how it is done i mean on on a social environment social responsibility uh, sme invest investments yes. uh, uh, technologies and sustainability yeah. so the trend will will continue like this and we see really we see some positive changes yes. to be frank we see positive changes mm -hmm. uh, for example when we started even uh, it's a very important uh, uh, sector is the SME financing of yes. SME sector is very key and very important and we started even earlier on this 2014 15 yes. uh, on this at the time when we started again through the research we, we found out that many of the members perhaps no, not not finding it as very you like high uh, yeah. so but then when we when we uh, like um, having had a number of round tables in different regions in in Bahrain we have in Saudi we had in uh, in Malaysia and other places. So they started exchanging this information. Yes. And for example, some seeing that many, many, uh, or a number of the Islamic banks had dedicated departments for SMEs and others not. Yes. Two, three years after down the road, we saw that most of the Islamic banks have dedicated, ha have department. dedicated department, yeah. which was very positive uh, change. So it allows perhaps for, and it's I mean, it's good for both. It's yes. a business opportunity for the banks, but also for the real economy and for the SME sectors. So we, we found that this award is uh, something, of course, um, for us, it does not require from the banks any, any contribution and it's symbolic. We showcase what it's they are incentive. doing. Yeah, it's an incentive, so which is very positive and we will continue with it so even though we actually uh, to be frank we have requests for having uh, more like on the topic or more frequent yeah but we we said for now we'll keep it every two years and we may we may revisit this in the future definitely but these initiatives uh, are important incentives uh, not because the banks won't do anything about it but it will highlight them more you know when you see uh, one of these banks that have received these awards you would want to look more into it and then you'll understand it and you'll see if there's something similar in your country and so on and so forth thank you very much for being with us today and for explaining a lot of um, uh, the uh, things mm -hmm. that uh, Sibafi is dealing with um, on uh, for the past 21 years and um, that was the end of our show and uh, thank you for coming thank you Sarah for the opportunity and pleased to be here thank you and we'd like to thank you dear viewers for watching us and we'll see you next week in another edition of Inside Edition